the students and school personnel doing all three services. Um, and then next Sunday evening, we will have a drive-through popsicle and prayer time from 6 to 7. Um, if you are a student or a teacher or a um, school staff and want a prayer and a popsicle, come by next Sunday night. Um, our sermon today is provided by Dylan Reed, our Director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries. Um, beginning in September, Brian Lawson will be our lay preacher, and Reverend Denman Jones will be our resident elder. Um, for those of you that know Methodist um, doctrine, that means he'll be doing communion and funerals and those kinds of things. So, um, so would you join me in prayer as we start worship today? God, we are grateful for this opportunity to gather and for the freedom that we have to be in this place in this time. Just be with us as we worship today and guide us in always allowing our thoughts and our actions to focus on you. Amen. Well, I'm going to invite you to stand as we begin our time of worship this morning. We have freedom that comes from the Lord. We're thankful for that.
Specific Children's Church or Child? Good job, Clay. Let's take time out of turn to the Lord and have a time of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father and Creator of all things, sustainer of all things created, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. The majesty and glory of your name is what draws us to praise your holiness today. We thank you for walking with us during these days of trial. We are lost without your guidance and care. Though at times it seems like we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we are you are leading us as a shepherd leads his sheep. We are in a time of turmoil and confusion in our country and throughout the world, but your light shows us the path to follow. We as a congregation are facing difficult times. We feel like a ship without a rudder being pulled wherever the turbulent seas pull us. But you are our compass that will show us the way and our captain that will reassure us that we will make it through the storm. We again pray for Pastor Gary's health and for the doctors that are treating him. We pray for him and his family as they deal with the major changes in their lives. We pray for your healing and guiding hand will be with all of them. We love you, Lord. We thank you again for your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Messiah, and for the counsel of your Holy Spirit in our lives. We pray now that you will be with us as we go through this week. Help us to be your light to everyone we encounter this week. And it is Jesus' most holy, precious name that we pray this prayer. Amen. As we continue our time of worship this morning, the next song we're going to sing is 10,000 Reasons. The song's not about 10,000 reasons to gripe about what's going on in the world. It's not about 10,000 reasons.
give praise to the holy name of the Lord today. Amen. I'm here. I'm just struggling with my little earpiece. I promise I'm here though. Come. I got the, I get to wear the, I call this the Britney Spears mic. I don't know why, but it just reminds me of that. <laughs> um, so glad that you're here to, to join us either online or in person. Um, as much as I am glad to be able to give this message this morning, I, like mo- most of you, all of you, um, don't necessarily like the circumstances in which I'm doing so. Um, but I am very glad to have the opportunity to do so this morning um, and to serve this, this wonderful church. I used to watch a show called Destination Unknown. Um, people would go on these trips to unknown locations and do different activities that are at the, at the locations that they go to. Um, I wouldn't necessarily mind being on that show. Um, you know, you get to go to a place, a new place that you don't know, um, and you get to do certain things in that location, um, but I'm not a real fan of it when it comes to life and having destination unknown in our lives. Um, it's a great idea for a, a TV show, but it probably just needs to remain on TV for most of us. Um, we tend to admire great adventurers. Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, Felix Baumgartner, who jumped from the edge of space skydiving 24 miles back to Earth, Amelia Earhart, I admire all of these people who went in and did all these things in destination unknown type of situation, but it doesn't mean I would want to try any of those things. Um, We have this desire to know and control our futures. We like to know when things are going to happen, and we like to know um, how, how it's going to happen and all the details so we can make sure that we're in perfect control. We want to know what's coming next and how that will affect our future. And we want to be able to plan and be prepared for those things when they come. There are so many unknowns for us as a church right now and as a people in general. What will we do as we transition into life with a new pastor? Concern for Pastor Gary and his family. When will this pandemic be over? That's a personal favorite of mine. How am I going to pay bills? How is my loved one going to beat this sickness? Am I going to have a job next week? What is school going to look like for me this upcoming year? As you can tell, I'm trying to get to the point that the list of unknowns goes on and on and on. Life being full of unknowns is never going to change, unfortunately. But there is a way to live life unafraid of an unknown future. In the unknown, there is someone who wants to be known. God wants to be known in the unknown. Someone, God, who he desires to be known and he desires to know us. Hebrews 11.8 says this, By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. Not knowing where he was going, he set out. That scripture is referencing Genesis 12. And Genesis 12.1 starts off with Abraham receiving word from God, right? He's, God says this to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Basically what God is saying is, Abraham, leave everything you're familiar with. Leave everything you've grown accustomed to. Leave everything that's comfortable and convenient. Walk away from your memories, your family, your security. Uh, and start walking and I'll tell you when to stop. Abraham didn't even know where he was going. The details weren't given to him. He was just told to go, right? I, as I'm thinking about his story, I think about the people that, that would have been around him in, in the town where he was living, just thinking that he's absolutely nuts, right? That he's just going to leave everything and just go where? You're just going to leave everything and just go do something new? I don't get it, right? We've never understood that as humans why anybody would want to do something like that. The reason, though, must have been that Abraham was fully convinced he was doing the right thing by listening to God. He was fully convinced that God wouldn't let him just kind of wander off and be forgotten. Abraham had a life-altering encounter with God, and as a result, he stepped out in faith and obedience. 
A story from my life that I link to this message is an, a mission trip that I got to go on with a group of students to Jamaica. We would um, do a lot of visits in neighborhoods within the community to shut-ins um, and people that just couldn't get out any longer. And I remember our trip leader, Eric, who very much knew the location, right? He very much knew everybody there. He knew the streets. He knew the houses that we were visiting. And he guided us in a way that I felt unafraid to walk in these neighborhoods, right? Because I felt safe because he knew where he was going. If we, had, if we wouldn't have had Eric, it might have been a very different situation for me with all the students in, in Jamaica and all that kind of stuff. Like with our place, we are, like the place we are as a church right now, we don't know what lies ahead. We don't know who the next pastor is going to be. We don't know what Pastor Gary is doing day by day. But like with Abraham, God honors our faith and obedience. He sees our struggles in, in the unknown. And he, he honors us when we show him faith and obedience. When life seems confusing, when the circumstances seem impossible, like they do quite often nowadays, God is there. He's saying, I know you don't see the bigger picture, and especially I'm sure with me, when he tries to show me what the bigger picture is, and my little scatterbrain self is just kind of looking at all these little tiny pictures that I think are so great. He's trying to show the bigger picture, and he's just waiting for us to allow him the time to do that by showing him faith and obedience. He knows what is currently unknown to us. He sees the bigger picture. And for us as a church, for Gary and his family, he sees what is coming next, even though we can't hardly seem to see that ourselves. We don't know where the way out is. We want to know. We would love those ideas. And I'm sure when Abraham was told to go, he probably said, hey, do you maybe just want to pass me out just like a little tidbit? Is there going to be this, you know, where, where do I get to go? Just a little, just a little hint. But he didn't get that, and yet God fulfilled his faith and obedience. When you step into the world of faith, you may, we, we don't know what lies ahead, but you know the one who sent you. We don't know all the details of what's going to happen in the future or even the next five minutes, but we have a God who can be known, who wants to be known. We have a God who is faithful his plans are to give us hope in a future. And he can be trusted with these things in our lives. So church family, I ask that we hold firm in what's going on. Pray without ceasing and know that our very known God is so much bigger than our unknown futures. Before I finish and pray, I'm going to read this psalm that um, has grown to be very important to me over the last couple of years. It's Psalm 121, verse 3, and it says, He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. So even though sometimes we feel like, hey, God, this is getting pretty bad. You know, I don't know if you're still here or you're dozing off or whatever, right? But, you know, maybe you want to wake up now and check and see if everything's okay. God does not slumber. He does not fall asleep on our lives. He knows the bigger picture, and he honors us when we show him faith and obedience. So if you'll join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for an opportunity to come and worship you this morning. God, we, sometimes we forget that showing you faith and obedience is all that we really need to do to see the bigger picture. But we're so concerned about things that are happening that we forget to do so. So God, I ask for myself and for these people in this church that we're reminded to show you faith and obedience, just like Abraham did and so many after him, that you'll carry us through even though when we can't see what lies ahead. And we thank you for that promise. We pray all these things in your son's most precious and holy name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we finish up our time of worship. And see if we can find Josh. He's wandered off somewhere.
this song, I Will Follow, just ties perfectly in what, what that Dylan is talking about. That God never slumbers or sleeps, but we know that wherever he goes, we can follow him and be trustful that he will lead us. As I said in the prayer earlier, we are, as we are dealing with some tough times here throughout the world, but we know that God's always with us. He is guiding us and showing us everything that, that we need to get through these tough times, and we're so grateful for what the Lord is doing for us. Not fast enough. Not fast enough, sorry. <laughs> I'll stretch even longer. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> I always knew I could count on you, Scott. <laughs> but it is great that we know we have a Lord that we can't follow. That he's always going to be that light in the path through the darkness of this world. And we're so grateful for everything Jesus does for us and walking with us, holding us, guiding us each and every day. <laughs> Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When you move, I'll move. I will follow. Whoa. Knowing that we serve a God who wants to be known and is bigger than our unknown people. 